So there are four primary red flags with this business model. Number one is just the gym model in and of itself. The open gym model of 2,500 square feet and the trainer lease space, those literally don't mix at all. The second piece is the price point. The price point, they're in no man's land. I'll get into that in just a second. They have three partners, huge red flag, especially with this. There's almost zero chance, and I'll break down the math, of the partners actually making money out of this space. And then they're not running ads. So no acquisition at all, no acquisition strategy. So here's my solutions. Instead of all the problems, go through solutions. Welcome to Gym Rescue, episode number one. My name is Kale Owen. I'm the CEO of Gym Launch and Prestige Labs. For the last six years here at Gym Launch, we have worked with over 4,600 gyms across 20 different nations and countries across the world, helping them grow and scale their businesses. We have seen tons of different types of business models. And in this series, I'm going to break down different biz models from prospects that have reached out to us to ask for help. I will not give you their names, but I will break down their locations, all their information that they have given us, and I'll walk through, frankly, what's wrong with their model, how they need to change it in order to be profitable. And if they don't change it, what's going to happen? Call in this gym rescue. If this is your model and you're looking at this and you're watching this, just understand that this is what we're looking at. And this is based off of all of the experience that we have inside of the industry and what we're trying to do. Let's dive into this. I want to start here and we're going to break down this model as we go. The reason why I have some of this blocked off is it's easier for people to not focus on a ton of different things. So we're going to walk through this step by step. So we'll call this gym a, their location is in North Carolina. They're outside of Charlotte and their model is an open gym or trainer lease space, meaning that they have an open gym model where people can come in and just purchase a membership per month and have access to the facility. And then the other way that they want to be able to generate revenue is to lease the space to trainers, independent 1099 contractors to come in and use the space. Here's main problem, red flag number one. It's an open gym concept for CrossFitters. It's a CrossFit style facility that people can come in and use it and train because there's a whole bunch of equipment that CrossFitters use, which apparently I guess is different than if you were going to go to a big box gym or a health club and they have their own space dedicated to this. They have three partners in the business, red flag. Their square footage is 2,500 square feet. Big problem right away. So 2,500 square feet, pretty hard to grow something profitable out of 2,500 square feet with this type of business model, open gym, trainer lease. It's very hard because you're just limited by space. This is why the bigger players in the game, like Planet Fitness, Gold's Gym, Equinox, all the others, they are obviously much bigger, much better because you're basically battling on facility. Their price, this is pretty rough, $89 per month for open gym, another red flag, or $20 a client up to $500 a month per trainer, which is a problem in and of itself. Current kind of information about them. They opened in March of 2022. Right now they're making $2,500 a month and they are losing $2,000 a month. So their break even right now currently as a business stands is $4,500 a month. They currently have 30 clients, which means they've averaged adding six per month since opening and they spend $0 on ad spend. So they do not have an acquisition strategy currently. So let's break down the immediate red flags. There are four primary red flags with this business model. Lots of them stand out, but four primary ones. Number one is just the gym model in and of itself. The open gym model of 2,500 square feet and the trainer lease space those literally don't mix at all. The second piece is the price point. The price point, they're in no man's land. I'll get into that in just a second. They have three partners, huge red flag, especially with this. There's almost zero chance, and I'll break down the math, of the partners actually making money out of this space. And then they're not running ads. So no acquisition at all. No acquisition strategy. I will walk through the math on what that looks like as well. So let's break down the gym model itself. So biggest issue right now is this is max capacity per hour is 50 people in 2,500 square feet. I am making the assumption that they have all 2,500 square feet of open space not an office, not a front desk, not unused space at all. So this is making the assumption that all 2,500 is perfectly open with equipment available to use. And this is also based off 50 square feet per person. Here's the problem. Crossfitters typically take up more space. So when you get into snatches, cleans and all that stuff, what we have found to do it safely is you need anywhere between 75 to 100 square feet of actual space for CrossFit style workouts. But this is the most amount of people that they can fit within an hour. Now you might think, cool, we can run it for 24 seven and we can make a lot of money. That's at max capacity though. You gotta understand that most likely on this type of model, the most amount of members you're going to get is anywhere between a, maybe 100 to 150 people on this type of model. And we'll get into why in just a second. The main well, the main reason is price points in no man's land. And I'll break that down in just a second. But $89 a month is two to three times, eight times, nine times more than anyone else in the space that has the same style business model. And they have nicer facilities, nicer bathrooms. They have all the amenities. They have everything that you need. And all of them are putting in places or spaces within their facilities for this type of 
workout. I know for me, like I go to a, a health club locally, I pay 35 bucks a month. My wife pays $20 a month. They have two different sections, all turfed with rigs, barbells, platforms, the whole thing. I can go and do all my workouts and never have to worry about it. I pay $35 a month. I'm not paying $89 a month for something like this. And frankly, that's gonna be the first thing that people cut because there's no coaching involved. There's no value involved with this. It's not something that's gonna work. Their hypothetical gym max. Let's work through this. This would be good. Their good range. So good would mean they get 100 members. This would mean that they're at 10% churn and they're adding 10 people a month, which would be almost double what they're currently adding per month. At 10% churn, this would be their hypothetical max, which means they'd have 100 members at $89 a month, which means they would cap at $8,900 per month. Well, $8,900 per month minus their current break even, which is $4,500. Divide that $4,400 profit per month by the three partners, and each partner makes $1,466 per month. That sounds horrible. I don't know about you. That's good. Like that's like if you crush it and you keep growing and doing all that. But even then at their current pace, it would still take them over a year at their current pace if they lost no one, still over a year to get there at their current pace of adding six people per month. Now their current pace is here. This is where they're going to max out at. They're adding six people per month and I'm being very conservative on churn of 10%. Their churn is most likely going to be 15 to 20% as we get into this because of their price point. If they were lower, it would, but they'd also be making less money and they they would need a bigger space, but their current space, they're going to max out at 60, which means they're going to make 5340 per month minus their break even. That's $840 of profit, which is $280 per partner. And this is not counting payback. So like they still have to pay back over $40,000 in build out costs and initial investment, which is actually pretty inexpensive, which tells me that the equipment is actually not that great. And they didn't do a ton of stuff on the equipment because 40 grand, you can buy a decent amount, but like that means it wasn't outfitted in the way that will actually make this thing pop and stand out. That is gym model number one. That's like red flag. Number one is a gym model. Number two, is the price point. You've heard me say this multiple times, but here's the deal. The membership buying curve, right? So right now with where they're at, they're in no man's land. Here's where they're at. And this is a problem. If you look at this on the demand curve versus price point and how large these classes are, you can see that on all the way to the left-hand side in that tall green section, that is where the health clubs typically lie. They're $25, $30, $40 or less per month, and they're saving a ton of money, but the demand is really high because it's really inexpensive and it's essentially a lease usage facility. You're leasing to use the facility, paying a lease agreement every single month to swipe in and go in and have access to a facility. Notice where the red is with the black X's, we call it the watermelon curve, but this is where it's no man's land because you're in between roughly 40, $50 a month, probably 40 is about the cap, all the way to about $150 a month. That no man's land is not where you wanna be because you're not offering any services, you're not offering nutrition, you're not offering coaching, you're nothing. You're just charging $89 a month for people to have access to something that they can get for, again, nine times cheaper than what you're charging right now. And you could say, well, I'm going off the fact that this is built for CrossFitters. It doesn't matter. You're still not gonna make enough to break even because around your area, there's not gonna be enough CrossFitters that are good enough, that don't need the coaching, that are introverts and hate working out in a group that would rather come to your facility and pay more than what they can pay somewhere else. It doesn't make sense and it's not possible. The next piece is no perceived value, meaning there's no coaching, there's no nutrition. If you're trying to sell on your space, you're going to lose all day long, which goes into competing on facilities. So if you think about it, bigger boxes and the health clubs have 15,000 to 30,000 square feet and you're on 2,500 square feet. They have nicer bathrooms, they have showers, they have saunas, they have massage chairs, they have tanning beds, they have everything. And you may be like, well, my people don't want that. Well, you'd be surprised. They also have machines. So like if you want a day off and they got a whole array of machines and cardio equipment and they never have to wait and there's tons of options for them available that they can use at any point and it's cheaper. And they're gonna pay 10 to $40 a month compared to $89 a month. And they're paying $89 a month for less equipment, less space, and no community. So you're, you're not fighting on anything, you're just fighting on facility space. Next thing is partners. So red flag number three is three partners. I'm assuming two things in the next math, and I'm gonna show you the math. You want your profit per partner to be $50,000 a year. I'm making the assumption, which would, in my opinion, not make it worth it, but $50,000 a year, each partner makes that. And that your business will have 30% net margins, which means that at 30% net profit margins for this type of model, you would be in the 90th percentile of gym chips just as a heads up. With that, three partners, the first equation is we've got three partners times $50,000 a year, which means we have to make $150,000 a year in profit. Now we take that 150,000, we divide it by the profit margin. So take 150,000 divided by 0.3. That's gonna give you $500,000 a year, which is the top line amount of revenue you need to make in order to back into $150,000 of net profit before taxes. We're gonna take that 500,000 divided by 12 months. That means every month you need to make $41,667 in order for you as a partner, or whoever's a partner, to make 50,000. 
$50,000 a year. 41,667 divided by $89 a month. That's 468 members. That's a lot of members. Right now you have 30 or this gym has 30. So based on the current new member signup rate, which is six per month and assuming 0% churn, it would take 73 months or six years to reach this, just to reach that number. That's assuming 0% churn. If you did have 10% churn, right now you'd have to be signing up 47 people a month for the rest of time and keep 10% churn and keep signing up 47 people a month into this space, which has zero value, zero perceived value, no coaching, no nutrition, nothing that's actually pushing people to want to do it. Number four, no ads. C point right there. If you're not running ads, there is no chance of growth. You'll cap out at 60 people, basically make $280 per month per partner. Everyone's gonna get pissy, all that stuff. You're gonna need, like I said, 47 members a month at 10% churn just to reach that goal right there of $50,000. That's just assuming like most people go into business, $50,000 is cool, but the problem is, is that it's gonna take six years to get there at the current rate. And even if you start up signing up 47 new members, you gotta start spending money and outlaying money on ad spend, which means you're also gonna be in the hole for a while, most likely based on this model, because this model is so inexpensive to start and there's no perceived value, the cost of acquisition is gonna be very, very high, very high, which is probably why they're not running ads right now. Without lead gen, the current gym cap is 60 members. At that 60 members, you're at 5340 per month in average revenue. Because six members per month and assuming a 10% churn, your cap is gonna be 60 members because when you get to 60 members, you're gonna lose six per month. And if you're signing up six per month, you just stay in the exact same spot. You may go up to 65, you may go down to 55, but you're gonna stay in that range, which means no growth whatsoever. Those are just a four of the problems there. There's more deeper that we could dive into, but those are like the main points. The math simply doesn't work out because of the space no acquisition systems and the idea that you're positioning something in a niche market for CrossFitters when CrossFitters really truly don't care. CrossFitters, you can say they're not cheap. They really are. At the end of the day, once a CrossFitter goes through, unless they're a competitor and competitors are actually even worse than everyone else, they do it because of the community. They do it because they want to join a group of people and they want to sweat. They want to suffer. They want to be around other people. CrossFit was built on community. Building it on an open gym atmosphere is not community. What's going to happen is you're going to have clicks that come in and they're going to work out together and you're going to dip. But as soon as there's another space or another opportunity and one of the leaders of that click sees that and it's cheaper, they're just going to move to the other one and they're going to take everyone else with them. So there's no point in this. There's nothing that ties people to this at all. If you had a bigger space and you wanted to go the big box route, like the health club route, totally understand. You would need probably 10, 15,000 square feet, and you could probably crush it, but it would have to be a, a general type of gym. This is not the space for that. So here's my solutions. Instead of all the problems, let's go through solutions. Number one, this is option number one. Move to the gym launch model. Move to large group classes. You're gonna get rid of your open gym concept. You're gonna have a cap per session of 16 to 20 people. So you're gonna move to a large group. You're going to charge $49 a week for three time a week membership, and it's gonna be large group. Once you fill this up, you're gonna move to $77 a week for hybrid, which is simply just bolting on custom nutrition and accountability. So now you're adding in another level of service and you're charging for that. Then you're going to open up semi-private when you get to a certain point with your memberships, which is going to be four clients with one coach. And you're going to do it for $149 a week for semi-privates. You're going to remove two partners. It needs to happen. Like there's no point. I know two of the partners really aren't in the business anyway. And so you just remove two partners. See you later. There's no point in them being there. Pay them back and get them out. And then you're going to scale. Here's where we're at. So you're going to scale to 120 large group members. So LG stands for large group. 120 large group members. That's $25,000 a month in EFT. So you're going to scale to that. Then you're going to add on 40 hybrid members. So you're going to have 160 members at this point. 40 of them are on a hybrid membership of $77 a week, meaning they come in three times a week for a large group and they pay you an additional fee on top of that every week to get custom nutrition and accountability. You're making an extra $13,000 a month from 40 clients. Then you're going to open up your semi-private and you're just going to have 30 people in your semi-private, which you could get from the 160 right away, literally in eight weeks. We have a program that will just rock this out. You make $75,000 in cash and then you just move them into EFT. But you got 30 people people paying you 149 a week, just 30. That's it. Now you're making an extra $19,000 a month. And then you'll bolt on supplements at the end. 30% of your clients will be on subs, $80 commission per client. And that's a total of 61,500. You're making 61,500 off of 190 clients. Your payroll will be $31,213. This includes $20,000 a month salary to the owner. Other expenses are going to be around 10K, including ad spend, rent, everything else. Going to know the rent at this space is inexpensive based on the current numbers that they gave. So it can't be that much. So the total expenses would be roughly $41,213. Net profit before taxes is going to be $20,286 a month with 190 members. So that's option one. Now let's look at option B is a semi-private model. You just go straight semi-private. You have a 2,500 square foot facility. You do four on one per session. You run sessions every 15 minutes as you begin to build. So you start and you take peak times. And then when you start to grow, you just add a session every 15 minutes. So you have the way you do your programming is you have your warm up for 15 minutes. Then you move to your strength stations and you have strength stations every 15 minutes and you move them 
them in different ways. You can run a session every 15 minutes. And then what ultimately happens is when you get to max capacity, you're running 15 minute sessions or you're running hour long sessions every 15 minutes for five hours per day. You can do two and a half hours in the morning or three hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Doesn't matter. Just for five hours per day. It's 20 sessions per day. At $149 a week for a three time a week membership, you're going to remove the two partners. You're going to scale to this 160 semi private clients. You're going to make $102,000 a month, $102,000 a month, $149 a week with 160 clients and semi private. And you're only working every day for five hours, but you're not because you're going to have five coaches and you're going to pay them $75,000 a year to manage. You're going to have one admin person at $50,000 a year. You have one salesperson, all your expenses, your payroll, $63,750 a month. That includes a $20,000 owner salary. Other expenses are $15,000 a month. I went up and the reason why is you probably have to spend more on advertising. You might have some other stuff that you want to buy, all that stuff, which means your total is $78,750. Net profit before taxes is $23,250 with the owner taking a $20,000 a month salary, which is $240,000 a year salary. Plus you get this net profit with one partner and that's with 160 members. So those are the two options that I would do. There you go. So if you like this episode and you find this interesting, go ahead, click the like down below, ask comments on this, uh, break it down. Obviously this is scaling. You need to scale this, but you got to look at potential before you even start opening a gym. This is why this is very important. You got to look at what is your ability to grow? What is the opportunity that you have available? In the current model, the opportunity is not there. And the reason why is in theory, you're like, cool, it works on basically on an Excel spreadsheet, it would work because cool, if I just get this amount of people at $89 a month, you're missing the piece that you have no value. There is no value. You're competing against better facilities. You're competing against lower price. And you're in this no man's land where people just frankly aren't going to value you. Not even service. They're not going to value coming to your facility and being a member there. Switch it to something that's way more valuable, spend the time. And then what you can do is if you do the semi-private model, you can pay your coaches $75,000 a year. Don't know any trainers out there that would say no to that, especially in that area. They're going to be getting paid better than everybody else. And studies show that $75,000 a year is kind of that number that will allow people to be happy and they're stoked and no financial stress, depending on inflation moving forward. But now you're in a place where you're not going to get the turnover with the trainers. You're going to have a spot that basically will run itself with your admin getting $50,000 a year. Your trainer's owning a lot of the process. You have a salesperson that really doesn't have to sell that much. You're simply in a position where you have 160 members and you're taking home $43,000 a month. That is a sustainable model. That is something that you can do. It's going to take time and both are going to be hard work. Whichever model you choose is going to be hard work, but one of them has the potential to make you a ton of money. The other has the potential, almost a certainty of absolutely shutting down and not making money. So if you find this stuff interesting, um, go ahead, like it, drop a comment down below with any questions and hit the subscribe button as I do more of these.